Hey guys, in my last video I talked about 12 English words that are used in French, and I also mentioned the idea of doing a video about other English words that were used in French but were used really weirdly or very badly, or even English-ish words that aren't really even English being used in French. So I offered that idea to you guys as another video I could do, and a lot of you did show interest in seeing it. So. I'm happy about that because I really wanted to do this video as well because some of them are pretty funny. So here you go. Today I'm going to talk about some English words or English-ish sounding words brought into the French language but that are used very, very interestingly. Little disclaimer before I get started on this video, I am not in any way making fun of people who use these in French. Obviously it's just, it's totally 100% natural in French to use these and I'm not making fun of the fact that they exist or anything like that. Every language does this, but no matter what language we're talking about, <laughs> I still find it really funny and really entertaining, especially as a native English speaker, to see the words that have been taken from English very badly. So here are 12 of my favorite badly used anglicisms in the French language. The first one I promised you guys would be on this list because I mentioned the sort of like normal usage of this word in French and then I mentioned there was another one. So the word is jogging. In my last video I talked about the fact that it is used in the same way as English you know, jogging as in the activity, but there's another usage of this. When you say a jogging in French, un jogging, you actually are referring to a tracksuit or like a sweatsuit. So the outfit that you would wear maybe to go jogging or to go work out is a jogging in French. This can be very confusing, especially considering the normal usage of the word jogging is also in the French language. So just because you've heard it once and you think it's safe, doesn't mean it's completely safe, because it's not. The next one I really thought about saving for towards the end of the list because it might be my absolute favorite. Like when I tell people about bad anglicisms in French, this is probably the number one one, <laughs> the number one word that I say to them. Relooking. I'm not going to attempt to say it in a French way because I think I'd probably just butcher it. It's very, very hard to say words from your native language in French like a French person would say them. The word actually means makeover. Maybe you guessed that, maybe you didn't. I guess it sort of makes sense. I do believe it's pretty natural usage to say un look in French, a look. So I guess that's sort of where this word came from. So re-look-ing to make it a noun. <laughs> a re-looking. The next one you probably need to know if you're a French student or if you're going to come spend any time in a French-speaking country, and that's the word for tennis shoes or sneakers. The word for shoes is chaussure, so you can say chaussure de tennis, I believe, and I think also I might have heard like a tennis to refer to like tennis shoes, but the most common way that you're going to hear French speakers refer to the sneakers in general is basket. At first it might seem like maybe this is just a French word and it just has a different origin, but it's just spelled the same way as basket in English. But actually Actually, if this were an actual French word, it probably spelled something like B-A-S-Q-U-E-T-T-E -T -T -E or something like that. But in French, in fact, if this was an actual completely francicized, Frenchicized French word, then they would not pronounce the T on the end because any other words that are spelled with E-T like that, you don't pronounce the T. So that's just further confirmation that this is just an anglicized word, maybe referring to like basketball shoes, because you do have tennis shoes, basketball shoes, I don't know. But for whatever reason, it's now just adopted the meaning of sneakers, tennis shoes, we have a million words for that in English, but those types of shoes. Nextly is the word for tape or the verb for to tape. So a lot of languages will take brands and make them into sort of the generalized term, for example, Kleenex in, in English. But this is like taking itself to new levels with this particular one, because in French, when you refer to tape, I've heard tons of people refer to it as scotch. Obviously scotch is a very big brand of tape, so that sort of makes sense that that would sort of happen that way. It happens a lot. What's even funnier though, is that people will not just refer to the object as scotch, but they will also use it as a verb. So to tape something, they will use scotche. You scotch something in French for the word to tape. I don't know why I find this so weird because I know, I guess it does exist in English. I actually just thought of the example of Xerox for scan, which I don't use personally. It's a little bit less common, I think, but you do say to Xerox something, but I just find it really funny to hear. Not even the sounds are French, that ch sound with the, the TCH. So that's not French in any way, shape or form. And I don't, I mean, I assume there's a word for tape maybe somewhere in French, but you probably won't hear it that often or at least I haven't. It's just scotch means tape and to tape is scotch -a. 
Next, we have fast food. Now, fast food has the exact same meaning in French as it does in English, obviously referring to things like McDonald's and Taco Bell and Arby's and places like that, fast food restaurants. What's funnier about the way that French people use this word is that they'll often use it as sort of a countable noun. So in English, the way we use it is either as an adjective, a fast food restaurant or a fast food chain or a fast food brand, or we use it as a noun in the same way that we would use food and it's not countable. I'm using kind of like English teachery terms for this because I'm a grammar nerd, I love English, I know not all of you guys probably will be that enthusiastic about it. So I hope this is all making sense to you, but basically you can't say a food, like one food, two food, three food, it's just some food. So that's not countable. But the way it's used in French is countable. So you will hear people saying a fast food when they're referring maybe to a fast food restaurant or a fast food like item, like a type of food. I can't be too specific about this because to be honest, I haven't really talked about fast food that much with people. Shockingly, the American, like, I guess I sort of disassociate myself from like McDonald's and things like that. But I have heard it more than once and I have heard other English speakers, like when we've talked about things like this, it has come up, so they've heard it as well. The next one I learned from watching YouTube actually and that's dressing so a dressing in French or I'm not again I, I feel like I should attempt to say these in a French way but I'm sort of like hesitant to do it because I'm afraid I'm gonna say it badly but un dressing in French means a wardrobe or a closet so I learned this from watching a few lifestyle and beauty vloggers in French for example un vide dressing which is like when you get rid of everything in your wardrobe I can't remember the the word in English for that there's like a specific I think word for that that type of video you add an ing and you make it countable and all of a sudden it's a, a weird anglicism in French. It seems to be like the only qualifications. Going along with the same pattern, the next one that I have on my list is un uh, smoking. It's just the French word for tuxedo. Probably, I'm guessing this does historically have something to do with smoking. Whatever its history though, it's an extremely common word to hear. I think maybe I've heard the word tux used in French, maybe, but almost always it will be smoking. So once again, you take an English word, you make sure it has an ing on the end, you make it countable, and you have a smoking. Next we have un prushing, which again, follows the exact same pattern. This one is sort of similar to uh, the original, I guess, English background of the word, but it means blow dry. I haven't really heard this one too much just because I haven't really like talked about blow drying my hair too much with people, <laughs> but I think it's more specifically referring to when you have it done at an actual hairstylist. It has nothing to do with untangling your hair with actually like brushing your hair, it's blow drying your hair. In the fall and winter seasons, you are often going to hear the word pull. This has absolutely nothing to do with pushing or pulling. It is a sweater or a sweatshirt. I think it might also be possible to say a sweat for a sweatshirt, but of course a lot of French people will pronounce it sweet. But I'm not 100% positive about that one. What I am positive about is that pull is, in my experience, the most common way to refer to a sweater or a sweatshirt. And the place you're gonna park your car is not a parking lot. It is a parking in French. They don't use the verb to park or a parking spot or any these other words that we have in English for parking, the only time you will ever hear this, or at least that I've ever heard this, is in reference to a parking lot. I really do think that it's lost all of its meaning because otherwise a parking makes absolutely no sense. But in French, probably, maybe originally they were called parking lots and they just got shortened because if the words have no meaning to you in your head, then I mean, it's really easy to shorten things and to drop the ends off of things because it doesn't mean anything. So that's probably what happened, I'm guessing, but yes. Now we're left with today, a parking. I promise this is the last one like this that I'm gonna put on the list, but this one also has that ing uncountable form that French loves to do with English words. The word is planning. So a planning is a schedule. Again, you can sort of see where this came from when you don't have a meaning associated with the word, you don't really use it in the same way naturally. So what you get today is a planning, which is not actually like sitting down and making the plans, but it's just referring to the schedule itself, the object, the thing. This is one I think that was probably also brought over with a lot of those workforce terms that I talked about in my last video. And it is somewhat natural, it's just very weirdly sort of like transformed when you use it in French. The last one on this list is one that I discovered just recently. It was when I was in London and I was talking about something with my husband and he, I don't know, I think I mentioned something about a walkie-talkie and he stopped me and he's like, What'd you call it? Because apparently in French, instead of walkie-talkie, they say talkie-walkie. I did have to look this one up because I had my doubts. I thought, well, maybe, obviously, like, walk and talk are both English words. That's obviously where it came from, was referring to the fact that you could walk and talk because you weren't, like, stuck 
to a chord. So obviously it has its roots in English meanings and English words, but I thought, well, maybe it actually was invented in France or another non-English speaking country, and they just took those words. So I looked it up, but it does in fact come from the US. It was an invention in the US, and that's where it got its widespread use, I believe in World War II or one of the World Wars. So yes, it does have its roots in English. It was originally there. So that is definitely an Anglicism that has been taken and sort of warped in the French language. And to be honest, I find it just a little bit cute when I think about it. I mean, when you think too much about the word walkie-talkie as well, it sounds really weird. You just literally add E sounds to two English verbs. So walkie-talkie already kind of has that archaic, funny sound, but then talkie-walkie not only has those exact same kind of cute sounds, but it also sounds so wrong in your brain that, I don't know, it just sounds adorable. So there you have it. There are 12 of what I think are the funniest bad Anglicisms in French. Many, many more exist. I know of a few more that didn't make it onto this list, and I'm sure there are tons that I don't even know about and I haven't even encountered. So let me know in the comments if you know of any more, or again, if you don't speak French, let me know some funny, like weird Anglicisms that exist in other languages that you might know. Language is just really fun. I mean, it can be so challenging and so stressful and so difficult. And then you have things like this that just, it's really fun to just take a step back and smile at them and laugh at them and just remind yourself of how funny it is. As always, thank you guys all so much for watching and I will see you soon.